Welcome back, everyone. Toysh is here, and a very happy San Diego Comic Con 2022 to you all. We're going to be kicking it off this week with a look at a lot of different toys on the horizon, Comic Con exclusives as well, like this one right here. Thanks to my friends over at NECA Toys. We're totally checking out their premonition of a premutation cartoon at Ninja Turtles. STCC exclusive, and on the back, and on the front, and all over the place. Such fantastic packaging. It's very much the Turtles in Disguise box, reused, repurposed for this premutation set featuring four, well, uh, very integral background characters, so to speak. Here's everyone involved with the creation of this particular set, so thank you very much for that. And of course, here is the barcode as well. Now, you should be only able to get this at SDCC, so if you didn't order it online, yeah, you have to get it at Comic-Con anyways. But you open up the box, as you can see, it's all Velcroed, and there are a lot of different surprises and such all around the box, including a nice window to see all four characters. So we have Baxter Stockman, we have Hamato Yoshi, and we have the human versions of Bebop and Rocksteady. Those are going to go really great with that Loot Crate Scrag, right? Hint, hint, wink, wink. I would love it if that uh, showed up anytime soon. But like I said, lots of little nods here and there all over the box. See which ones uh, you can spot, right? Even inside the packaging. That's where I know a little bit, uh, a few more, we'll just say. There's uh, Tempestra, I'm thinking, and the Ray. Little robots here and there, the Bug Man. And my favorite, the Knucklehead right there, huh? Maybe that's a coming. So, this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new San Diego. Diego Comic-Con 2022 exclusive, the cartoon at TMNT premonition of a premutation by NECA Toys. And of course, once you get everything out of the box, well, you get quite a nice set. And in true NECA Ninja Turtle fashion, they loaded up the box with lots of accessories, lots of weapons, and of course, lots of hands, right? We'll look at them all in detail. But I can honestly tell you that the figures themselves are all very nicely painted, but in pure NECA turtle fashion, I'm gonna say, you might wanna heat up a few of these, right? Just to be on the safe side, hint, hint, wink, wink. But uh, yeah, all four characters with all the different accessories, Man, oh man. So, you do get a mouser. This is my first mouser. I haven't gotten the mouser set just yet, but it's got a lot of articulation that you would expect for a mouser with the jaw opening and closing to eat all the rats in New York City. It's got some nice neck articulation as well, and of course, the legs and the knees will move around so you can get your mouser up and running and ready to attack the turtles. But just the look, everything is captured for the mousers from the cartoon iteration. Even the inside of the mouth is all painted nicely. And then you have this little device right here. Now, I did have to look these up. This is the heat-seeking turtle scope from the episode Incredible Shrinking Turtles. Just be careful right here on these top two little pegs right here. You don't want to hit it wrong and snap them off. They seem to be very brittle, so just just FYI, be careful on that. And then you have the sarnath o -meter from various episodes in Curse of the Evil Eye episode as well, if you wanted to go that route. But that's pretty cool. The sarnath Eye, right? The Eye of Sarnath. That's, uh, that would be a nice uh, nod to the whole Archie universe. Maybe we'll get some of those going too, hopefully soon. And then you have a, well, it's a butterfly net, or in this case, a turtle catching net. Be careful on the netting right here. You think it's like a, an actual cloth kind of thing. It looks very good, but you don't want to go pinching it too hard. It's a plastic. Eh, just be careful. That's all I'm going to say. But overall, well done there. And then you have some incredible shrinking turtles that are inside their little glass jar right there. And that's Really cool to see. You can have some instant turtle flakes right there for your pizza, right? But uh, yeah, those are air holes. And the best part is the top of the jar comes off and the four turtles inside are removable. We give them a little shake and uh, yeah, they look pretty darn cool. Now they're very, very teeny tiny. They do have some paint, which is nice to see. It's not just like, here you go, whatever. They actually put some thought in it. They're all interconnected to one another. So it's basically just one solid piece. But you can go ahead, place them back in the jar, get them all secure, put the lid on the top, give it a little shake, and you're ready for some puree turtle. And then speaking of which, you got four baby turtles inside a glass bowl. That is Awesome. And all the little turtles come out and they're all painted. They're all cute and adorable. And look at that right there. Four itty bitty baby turtles that are becoming the Ninja Turtles. 
one day. But, uh, yeah, they actually look great. I love the way that these things came out. You just throw them back in the bowl and uh, watch them flop around. There you go. You have a walking staff, a bow staff, a stick, whatever you want to call it. That'll be good for Splinter. You can even say it's a premonition of a permutation for Splinter's walking stick, right? Crowbar is up. You got a really nice looking crowbar that you can use for Bebop and or Rocksteady. And then you got a baseball bat. Nice paint to it right there. You also have a bit of a broken piece of plywood, wood, wooden staff, whatever you want to say, table leg. Now, I'm going to say this one's kind of like, yeah, okay, thanks for the accessory. It's not really too spectacular. And you, you can have them hold it, whipping it around. You got two spray paint canisters, both of them with different designs on them. That's pretty cool. You can go around uh, tagging New York City, right? That's always a good thing. Leave your Bebop and or Rocksteady marks everywhere you go. Then, to top it all off, you got one cool looking 80s boombox, right? Very much a cartoon design. A little bit scratched up on the back. That's the only thing. A lot of the accessories are muy perfecto, but uh, this one kind of suffers a little bit. Eh, paint, little mishaps here and there. But uh, overall, it's pretty darn solid as well. And let me tell you, the hands, so many hands. Baxter Stockman hands, finger pointing, weapon holding, Hamato Yoshi hands, karate hands, martial art hands, and you can interswap their hands because they have the same skin tone. Then you got Bebop hands, right? Outstretched hand, gripping hands, and you got some pretty wild Rocksteady hands as well. Very cartoonified on the Rocksteady ones. Just make sure you don't lose any hands, just FYI, because, yeah, you got some cool figures to talk about now to boot, right? Don't forget the figures. As much time as we spent talking about all the accessories... You got four really cool figures, and like I said, they're background characters in many ways, but they are integral to the Ninja Turtle cartoon line, right? So many cool designs. Yeah, definitely worthy of a figure. So let's talk about them. I know that they're kind of all in order, and I guess we'll start with, yeah, let's go with Hamato Yoshi here. And first of all, I want to point out the colors really pop on him. From the purples of the kimono, and then you got his pants with the stripes, you got the white in the hair. The face is spot on. That's a really great looking Hamato Yoshi. And not every day we get some pre-splinter action, right? That's pretty darn cool. And right down to the line work on all the pants, pretty solid. Everything is pretty crisp, pretty lined up. And all the different black marks that emphasize the cartoon nature is pretty good. The articulation is great as well. Nothing that's like, wow, this is mind-blowing, but it's enough articulation for the cartoon line to get them into all the kind of fantastic poses that you would expect. And I kind of like what they did in terms of Hamato Yoshi's articulation. The feet will spin. You've got double jointed knees. And again, I'll tell you over and over, just be sure to heat these figures up before you really start moving them, bending them, doing everything. Because... Yeah, that's just how the cartoon turtle line goes, just FYI. But uh, yeah, pretty solid overall for Hamato Yoshi. And then, let's see, who's next? Let's do Rocksteady, a very pre-mutified Rocksteady. And I love the head portrait on this guy. What a, a, a cartoon character brought to life, right? Look at the pants on this guy. You've got the browns. You've got the different cell-shaded tones every which way. I love it. It's fantastic. It's just a very humanized Rocksteady, but they do a great job no matter which character they're putting forth. And again, much like Hamato Yoshi, a lot of articulation, a lot of movement out of this guy. One thing I'll point out right here, within the waist, right? It's something that I would think that NECA wouldn't do. They would paint this. I think this is a little bare right here where the belt and such meet. However, it looks to be painted up top, of course, right? It kind of goes over that. Probably because it would scrape it, possibly, but... Uh, that's one thing I have to point out. I, if anything, I got to talk about it. I kind of give them points down for it. You got to paint that, right? There's not much on this set. Everything's pretty darn cool. Then you have the double jointed knees. Again, just go real slow. You don't want to do it. Yeah, see, this is <laughs> the last thing I want to do is, of course, snap anything. But, uh, yeah, like I said, whoever you do it, hot water. Uh, some people use hair dryers or whatnot. So you got the feet, they'll rock to and fro. So again, once you kind of get them going, you see he has got a lot of articulation. Pretty solid overall. You can swap out the hands, put all the different weapons towards him, and yeah, just have a really cool looking pre-mutated rock steady, which again, not a lot of figures made for this particular character. And speaking of characters, yes, we have a pre-mutated Bebop. And I absolutely love just the hair on this guy. Bebop and Rocksteady are a perfect love letter to everything that was punk rock that you would see like 70s, 80s. You know what I mean? Especially 
in the 80s. And he's got a lot of articulation in the neck. So it's double jointed the neck moves and then, of course, the head moves as well. He's got his little spawn jacket thing going on, which is great. Dual shaded, red on the front, a little bit of orange on the back. And I love the zippers. The zippers are... They look realistic, and I don't know how they do It's just well-painted. That's all I can say. Then you got the legs. The legs will kick out. There's no problems, much like a previous Rat King, right, where the paint started to kind of crinkle if you kind of moved around the crotch area. No problems whatsoever there. You got double-jointed knees. You got these awesome, epic 80s boots right here. You got the feet. Man, he's just really cool. And again, when they put forth these characters, you could kind of say, well, did they reuse this? Did they reuse that? Well, who knows, right? It's pretty well executed in every sense. But I love his gauntlets, everything else. The white t-shirt with the red, the purple hair, the glasses. This is my second favorite uh, figure for this set. And if you can't guess my first one, well, here he is. Who'd have thought it, right? Look at that hair on that guy. It's not one of those characters where like, I absolutely need a human Baxter Stockman. But, uh... He's a lot of fun. And yeah, going back and having watched all the Ninja Turtle episodes again, he's in quite a few episodes. So I agree with a lot of people where I said, you know, is it really necessary? Yeah, he's necessary. Don't bother with the glasses. They're not going to pop off. He's got a lot of articulation in the neck. He's got his little yellow bow tie. His arms, they got double joints. He's got some shell shading from white to a nice crisp blue, really light blue. Inside the jacket, everything fares pretty well. And of course, he's just... He's a very tiny little man. You know what I mean? It's kind of funny to see that. You got the double-jointed knees. You got his sneakers. Everything about this guy. As a pre-mutated Baxter Stockman, I'm going to reiterate. You know, you're so used. When you say Baxter Stockman, you go, that's the fly guy. Well, this is the guy I totally remember. That and, the, you know, of course, the Mirage Comics version uh, back in the day. But this guy always stands out. He's just that little Weasley scientist guy. Kind of looks like you could put stuff in his pockets, can you? No, it's it's just well painted. It just it's kind of like an optical illusion. From the glasses to the facial expression, the pretty solid Baxter Stockman. And of course, yeah, all the figures are pretty dang solid. All four of them, of course. Oh wait, you know what? I could say it's a it's a five pack, right? Of course, if this was a different company, it would be a, a five-pack. You know who I'm talking about. Now, in terms of all the accessories and pairing these particular characters up with previously released NECA Turtles, well, yeah, Shredder, Baxter, Stockman, they're all there. It's pretty darn cool, especially with some incredible shrinking turtles using the Sarnath Ray, using the Turtle Locator. Everything fits. Everything looks good. Everything's got that cartoonification to it. And you got these two bros for life right here. <laughs> What a better pair, right? I think they scale pretty dang nicely. And again, it's fun to see Baxter Stockman and Baxter Stockman in the sense of the cartoon universe. Yes, they're roughly the same size as they should be, but uh, you know, clothes are a little bit different. The, the style's a little bit different in the colors and yeah, perfectly reflects the cartoon. And then you have some of the accessories that can be used for all the characters, to be honest with you, but in specifically with the Ninja Turtles, yeah, I think this human Baxter Stockman definitely looks good, right? <laughs> this guy always got the short end of the stick, I'll tell you what. Every episode he was in, and he still got the short end, even when he became the fly. And then the mouser is very cool. You could put the mouth over Mikey's hand, you know, just like the old video games, man. I mean, yeah, we're talking cartoons, but... Mousers were always a pain, especially in Shredder's Revenge, right? Pretty cool, huh? And then you have Hamato Yoshi, and he's going through the sewers after getting kicked out of Japan, and uh, he's got the fishbowl, and yeah, man, that, that's that's pretty darn cool. Again, having these characters that you wouldn't normally think, oh man, I need action figures for, you put the little turtles all over the place, have him holding one. I think a really cool accessory would have been some sort of it kind of looks like the ooze, right? You could put all the turtles on top of it, something like that. That would have been a cool extra accessory. That's just something I would have liked. But uh, in comparing him to Shredder from Hamato Yoshi to Rokosaki, yeah, I think they uh, definitely scale well. As much as they, they were really seen on the screen together, you know what I mean? But uh, still, it is fun to see these two human adversaries. I guess now we definitely need a human shredder to go with it, right? And he does fit in well with his sons. You got Leonardo and Donatello. However, there wasn't many episodes where he returned to human form. But even when next to Splinter, his mutated form, he's a little bit taller than the rat version of Splinter. But in either case, yes, he does look cool. And again, I'll reiterate, I'm thinking that, yeah, the staff that he comes with, you could say, yeah, it broke. 
and that's the one that he uses now. And you got the last two scoundrels of the box set, Bebop and Rocksteady. Again, I love Bebop. I love the way that he looks. Put a spray paint canister in one hand. You got the boom box up against his ear, walking down the streets of New York in the 80s, right? Right in the subway. That's just awesome. And then, yeah, you can use the chain. The chain, if I have to, again, rag on something, it's very chintzy. That they, I wish it was a little bit more stylized, something. I know it's just a chain, but you get what I mean? It's just kind of like, here's a chain. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just okay. But the bat, the broken table leg, piece of wood, whatever. Yeah, these guys are looking for trouble. And again, I'll reiterate, it would be really nice to have Scrag sometime soon to go with them. And then, of course, in comparing them to their mutated forms, Bebop and Rocksteady meet bigger Bebop and Rocksteady. Pretty darn cool, right? To see these two Looney Tunes go from humans to the animals. <laughs> I don't know. Why do we like these things? Who knows, right? It's just so dang cool. It's our childhood incarnate and all these little characters go together oh so well. So that's going to wrap it up for my look at the brand new San Diego Comic-Con exclusive premonition of a pre-mutation four-pack. Cartoon Ninja Turtles by NECA Toys. And you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything cartoon TMNT. And again, thank you to everyone at NECA Toys who made this video possible. Look forward to seeing you guys all at Comic-Con. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, I can't tell you how awesome it is to get some new cartoon TMNT NECA figures. I've looked at a lot of Ninja Turtle figures in the last couple months. But when you bring it back to NECA Toys and all the awesomeness they're doing, they are my favorite. They're killing it. They're the best in the biz. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.